Hey everybody, it's Mrs. C, and I'm coming to you today with a video. I don't know if it's going to be short or long, so we'll just have to uh, stand by and see. But it's a video, first of all, an overview of the laws of exponents, as you see here on this little chart I found on Google. And then I'd like to maybe go and explore one of the laws or a combination of maybe one or two of the laws in some, you know, let's practice uh, on the following slide. But first, let's just take a look at it because as you're entering into the laws of exponents, uh, it can be a little bit confusing. First of all, we're referring to these as laws, which I've always thought is a little funny because uh, we don't, I, don't, I don't know of too many other laws that we refer to in math, um, the exponents, and there's a, there's a bunch of them. So if we take a look at them, and that's my alarm. Oh, please. I'll tap to snooze. Um, if we follow along here, and I've got a, I, I think I was saying I have to change my color because ironically I was in blue. We have the product rule, and it's a law. So it's the product rule law, which is seems a little, <laughs> it's a little redundant to me. Uh, we have the quotient rule law. We have a power of a power. We have a power of a product. We have a power of a quotient, zero exponent law, and the law of negative exponents. And I liked this little um, picture that I found because it gave the law. It, it, it kind of explained the rule behind the law. <laughs> and it gave an example of, of, a, of a problem that was a slightly, you know, not a very big problem, but a problem that was worked out. So... Um, I liked that as a little bit of a, I don't know, just a, a reference for you, say. So oftentimes these are referred to as law one, law two, the first law of exponents. I, I don't think that anybody says that this has to be number one and that this has to be number two because honestly I, I kind of refer to this one as number two, the power of a power to me flows naturally after doing the product rule. So don't get bogged down with the numbers that you might see, uh, law one or law two. Just go by the title. That's why I wanted you to have the sheet, the uh, the laws by by their name. You gotta know the law. What if I said, you know, don't break law number 57, which law would that be? I don't know, I don't have a list. So just go by what the laws are. Understand the skill, understand the content, and you'll find that you're gonna be in a better shape. So. What I'd like to do is use this here for reference for you. You can take a screenshot or write it down in your notes is a good place for it. And then we'll refer to this. Maybe I can post this on my other videos so you don't have to go back and look at it. I'd like to go over the product rule. And, you know, if all things go well, it would be awesome if we could do a little bit of a power, the power to a power rule. Now, if you look here, it explains what the rule is, and sometimes it helps and sometimes it doesn't. The rule for product power right here says you keep the base and exponents. I think that it keep the base add exponents, I believe, is what that little shortcut means. So you keep the base, you add the exponents, and then they give you an example. Sometimes the example can confuse you, so relax. Don't, be, don't freak out. It's saying that the quantity of x to the a is multiplied to the quantity of x to the b, and you can see the bases are both x's. The base number is the big number. The exponent is the little one in the corner, just so you know. So when you have like bases, you keep the base, x, and you add the exponents, in this case, a plus b. Well, I can't add a plus b because I don't know what a plus b are, so I would just write x to the a plus b. Don't worry, if you see in the next example, they actually give us the a and the b and give us some exponents to play with. So it's saying x squared times x to the sixth times b squared would be, follow the rule, you can only multiply like bases. So you have x squared times x to the sixth, those are like bases, that would be x to the eighth. And then you have a b squared, but there's no other b to combine. So you put b squared, and really, honestly, put the b in front. Why would I put b squared in front of x to the 8th? I know they didn't. 
A, B, C, D, E, X, 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 Y, Z. X comes after B alphabetically. Please alphabetize. If you can, it's just a nice thing to do. All right, now drop down to the power to a power, and you'll find that that one is, like, super easy also. Keep the base and multiply. What the heck are they using an X to, ref to reference multiply? That's just silly. What is wrong with it? I am starting to not like this picture that I put up. Um, you keep the base and you multiply the exponent. In this case, we have x to the a to the b. So x to the a is being raised to a power of another number b. What do you do? You times them this time. So it'd be x to the a b. So if you see the little example they gave here, they did y to the third raised to the fifth. Three times five is 15, so it's y to the 15th. Easy breezy, right? Not too difficult. Well, we'll decide difficult when we practice it a little bit. Let's throw down a couple problems. Okay, so here's a problem. Ask yourself, of the properties, what am I doing? What is this being a is asking me to do? Um, uh, clearly, I have exponents, so this has to have something to do with a law of exponents. Uh, the parentheses have always indicated multiplication, so it looks as if I'm multiplying. Ask yourself, are you raising a power to a power? x squared, are you raising anything to a higher power? <laughs> well, I mean, remember, I only hit snooze, so there goes my alarm again, so sorry about that. Are you raising a power to a power? I don't know what I was about to write there. Look over here. No, you're not raising a power to a power. All of these little powers are little powers by themselves. We have x cubed. We have x to the fifth, y, y to the eighth, and x squared. Nobody's being raised to a higher power. So which property would you use? You'd use the multiplying exponents property. So... What you want to remember is you can combine. You're always searching with exponents, guys. The secret, you're always trying to shrink these down a little bit. Directions will say simplify. Sometimes they'll say evaluate. Evaluate would be as if I told you x was equal to something. Say I told you x was equal to 2. That would require you, and y is equal to 5. I'll just throw down two numbers. That would direction would probably be simplify and then evaluate. Then you'd actually give me a number. But in this case, I didn't give you a value. So the only thing you can do is simplify. So let's go ahead and do it. Let's do a little color coding because I find that that sometimes helps. You see x here, you see x here, and you see x here. Remember the rule is you can only multiply exponents that have like bases. You can only multiply expressions that have like bases. You can only multiply like terms. Remember. We have to have some kind of way of putting these guys together, even though we don't know what x is. So if we have x to the fifth, I'll just utilize the commutative property here and move things around a little bit. x to the third, I got you. x to the fifth, I got you. And x squared, I got you. I put them next to each other. The commutative property says I can rearrange them when I'm multiplying and adding. And then let's go ahead and put y and y to the 8th. And you're going to see quickly, I don't use parentheses anymore because when you write them next to each other, multiplication is inferred. So we already know they're multiplying. So now let's put together these guys using the rule. If you have like bases, you add the exponents. So you just add these guys together, keep the base. So 3 plus 5 plus 2 is 10. 3 plus 5 is 8. 8 and 2 is 10. So we can simplify all of the x's to be x to the 10th. Now I said I was going to color code, and look at me. I have my y's are the same color. That wasn't very color cody, was it? So here's my y and my y. I don't have any other y's, so this is times y and times y to the 8th. 
Okay, now, how many y's are here? What is the exponent? There's one y, clearly, but that y is being raised to the power of what? The question is, do you know if there isn't a power showing what it is? Some people would say zero because there isn't a power showing. Other people would say one because one is often implied and we don't show it. So the question is, which one is it? What would you pick? Well, if you picked zero, you're not correct. If you picked one, you are. Whenever you see a base that is being raised, not being raised to a power, there's no power showing, the power is to the one. And therefore, you're going to see why is that important? Well, because if you thought it was zero, zero plus eight is eight. But because it's not zero and it's one, one plus eight is nine, which would make the proper answer y to the ninth when you combine those. Final answer, guys, x to the tenth, y to the ninth. I'm going to give you another one, see if you can do it yourself. Okay, so here's the one that I'm putting down for you this time. This one's a little bit different, isn't it? It's still multiplying, but I've thrown numbers, con not constants because they're coefficients, they're coefficients, a number in front of a variable, call a coefficient. The other problem didn't have a coefficient. The rest of it is staying the same. So let's just use the commutative property, why don't we, to rearrange this so you can see in your head that this is not that big of a deal. I'm going to write all of like terms, all the things that are alike that can combine together. I'm going to write them in different colors. So let's trace this as a 2. And who's like the two? The four. They're both coefficients. Now I'll switch to another color. Let me color code my x cubed in green. It's like coloring. My x squared is also in green because they're like. And then I'll pick a color for my y's. And I'll do this y here and this y here. So when we put them together, we're going to rearrange them using the, the commutative property because I want to show you that just because they put the two x cubed y together and the four x squared y together, they're not together. It's not like they're married or anything. They're just sitting next to each other. And so commutative property says if the relationship is all multiplication, which by the way, b, t, w, it is, it's two times x cubed times y being times to 2, being times 2, y, and then the x squared, and then the y. It's all being times together. So I can rearrange them. So here I go. I'm going to say the 2 times the 4. And then I'm going to rearrange this. I'm going to rewrite my green. And I'm going to say times x cubed times x squared. And then I'm going to get my blues and I'm going to throw my blues down. And I'm going to say times the y times the y. You see, it doesn't matter how you rearrange them with the commutative property. That's what made the commutative property so important back in, I don't even know, help me out, fourth grade possibly. So now combine them. Two times four is eight. People often tell me, guys, well, I don't know if I can put, can I times that 2 to that 4? They're not together. They're separate. Don't, it, then put them together. If you need them together, put them together. I put them together in my head. I don't actually rewrite that because you know I'm lazy. So let's put together x cubed and x squared. What's the law? When the bases are the same, that's why I put them together. You add the exponents. Nice. And then we'll go to my blue. They're my y's. Uh-oh, no exponent showing. Put it down. When the bases are the same, add the exponents. Keep the base. There it is. That is the answer. X, well, excuse me, don't forget the 8. 8, x to the 5th, y squared. Usually done in all the same color, not in a rainbow of colors. Let's try another one. Okay, so I pulled this off of uh, CUDA, and we know we use CUDA a lot. This is the, the worksheet that they generate uh, for you for property of exponents. 
This is just the first, uh, the first eight, I believe. Now, the downside to CUDA, when you don't have the software itself, you don't pay for the license for the software, is you get what you get and you don't get upset. And they like to mix rules, uh, mix the laws up a little bit on one sheet. So in, in class, I can give you skill by skill. I can isolate one property at a time. This one's going to throw a bunch of them. And you're going to start to see this, and you might as well get used to it now. Your answer should contain only positive exponents. But unfortunately, when you're practicing law one, you haven't gotten down to the bottom where we have the, net, the, the law number, who knows, number eight, which is the, what, what you do with negative exponents. Like, what does a negative exponent mean? So until then, guys, this video, I'm just going to leave my, I'm going to forget this rule and say, it's okay. Don't worry about the negative exponents. In fact, just go ahead. Keep, keep your exponents <laughs> negative for now. All right. So let's just, let's do a couple. Now, the rearranging that I did when I was giving you the example, I rewrote. So let's take a look at number one. I'm not going to always rewrite them. But if we were to break down number one, you should try it yourself without me. You would write two and then times two times m squared, sorry, times m cubed. Now two times two is four and m squared times m cubed, they have like bases, you add the exponents, that's m to the fifth, that's the answer. So you can start just doing that in your head, and what I mean by that is you just say the two to two, two times two is four, and then you do m squared times m, it's really small, I'm sorry, m cubed, and then you get m to the fifth. So I'll probably do a little bit of that because I am talking you through it, and there's no reason why not to. All right, let's come on over to number two. Now, what is the coefficient of m to the fourth? The coefficient of m to the fourth is a, a one, and we don't show it. Now, when we're multiplying our coefficients, one times two is two. Then we have m to the fourth and m to the negative three. Remember, you add your exponents. But in this case, one's a negative. So you follow the rules of different sign, find the difference. Four and a negative three is one. Now, we don't usually write a one. We just proved that when we didn't write the one for the coefficient. So the answer you would see in the answer, in the work, in the answer key would be just 2m. Let's come on down to number three. We have a 4r to the negative 3 times 2r squared. Now we do the 4 times the 2 and we get 8. We do r to the negative 3 and r squared. You have like bases, so you're going to have an r, negative 3, and 2 is a negative 1. And for this video, you go ahead and leave it as a negative 1. That would be fine if you were allowed to leave your answer with negative exponents. For number 4, we do the 4 times the 2. We get 8. The n and the n, I'll have an n, and it's 4 and a negative 3 is 1. And so I don't have to show the 1. Coming on down to the next one, the 2 and the 4 is 8. k to the 4 and k to the 1 is k to the, you got it, 5th. Next one, we have a, a whole bunch of stuff going on there. Find the co find the numbers, the, co the coefficients. There's a 2 and a 2. 2 and 2 is 4. Now, find your x's. Which ones are x's? x to the 3rd and x to the negative 1. Add the exponents. A 3 and a negative 1 is 2. Now go to the y's. y is a negative 3 and a 3. Oh, nice! Negative 3 and positive 3 cancel out, giving me y to the 0. You're going to come to find in a following rule that y to the 0 is also known as 1. Any number raised to the 0 power is 1. For this activity, activity, if you left it as y to the 0, I wouldn't have a problem with it because you haven't gotten to that exponent, into that rule yet for exponents. But you're going to see an answer key that writes it like that. Okay, I'm just going to squeeze up here a little bit so we can do these last two. And we have 2 and 3 is 6. We have, uh, I like to alphabetize. I'm going to go to my X first. There's no other X, so I just write X. 
Then I go to my y. There's no other y, so I just write y squared. Love those. And let's come on over. Oh, yuck. I hate v's and u's. They look alike. So I have a 4 and nothing else, so I just got a 4 because it would be a 1, right? And 4 times 1 is 4. Then I have a v cubed and a v, a v what? A v to the 1. So what's v cubed and v to the 1? Keep the v and add the exponents. And u comes before v, but whatever. I'm going to just call it a day with u squared. I can't call it a day. I like to put my my variables in T U V. I have students all the time saying, oh my gosh, that means I have to know my alphabet. Yes, you have to know the, you have to know the alphabet. All right, guys, that is a short video for me. Well, it's 20 minutes, but it's a short video for me. Go get more practice on this. Don't worry about leaving your answers with negative exponents. It's okay. You'll get to the negative exponent rule in good time, and then you'll be able to go back and say, oh, I understand why the answer key said that the answer is 8 over R now. See, right now you're going, what? Don't worry about it. This answer is perfectly fine. Guys, you did awesome. And now, before my alarm goes off again, I gotta go. See you on the flip side. Later.